researchers at Harvard actually took the time to look at how your posture affects your mood. And the results were kind of shocking. Welcome to another video of Mortal Medicine. This is gonna be a bit of an esoteric topic because it's gonna talk about how your posture actually affects the way your brain works. Jordan Peterson, for example, talks about it. He says that it raises your serotonin and makes you more ready to engage with the world. Now, is there any validity to this claim? Well, researchers at Harvard actually took the time to look at how your posture affects your mood and affects your risk-taking as well. Before we take a look at the study, let's take a quick dive into neuroscience. First off, it's really important to take a look at the cerebellum. That's the part of your brain at the back of your head. The cerebellum is the place where all your movements and all your information from your muscles gets processed. So this processing causes the thing called proprioception. Remember that feeling when you're kind of in this dream state where you feel like you're falling. What's happening there is that your muscles are relaxed, but you're not sleeping. So the signals from your muscles going to your cerebellum do not go through meaning your cerebellum doesn't measure a physical body, which should be there. And that translates into this feeling of falling down, and that's when you wake up, tensing up all your muscles, and then you can start try to start over sleeping again. Subscribe for more content like this. But did you know that your cerebellum is also involved with emotional processing? According to a consensus paper written in 2016, the cerebellum is involved in processing negative emotions, like fear and anger. Now, this makes a little bit of sense, because if you think about it, your body reacts to these emotions, so your cerebellum better be connected to these as well. In this diagram, you can see how the thalamus, the emotional system, the emotional processing system, connects to the cerebellum, and how the cerebellum connects back to the whole system as well. These emotions are processed in your thalamus. For example, close to the thalamus, you have the amygdala, which processes the fight or flight reaction. This fight or flight reaction connects to the thalamus, which eventually goes to the hypothalamus and the hypophysis, causing a hormonal reaction. Not only that, from the thalamus, it also goes to the cerebellum. So the negative emotion not only gets transported into hormones in your body, feeling like stress, feeling like adrenaline, that feeling of, oh my god, I have to do something, but it also goes to your cerebellum, causing some changes in the way you perceive your body. Not only perceiving your body, but predicting the proper bodily movements. This is very handy for a survival setting, because if you're fearful, you want to have something that regulates the way you move. If you're fearful, it goes, the signal goes to a cerebellum, causes you to run away, for example. And it would be too slow if it did not go to the place where your movements are regulated and monitored. Now, it is hypothesized that the cerebellum's key role in handling strong stimuli of emotion can be seen by the anatomical connections between the subcortical, meaning the brainstem and uh, the cerebellum, or the thalamus, and cortical regions, meaning the places like the frontal lobe. Now, this connection is also highly myelinated, meaning it's very quickly transported. Information from one part of the brain, from the cortical to the subcortical, is therefore very quickly transported. Myelination helps with brain signals getting transported faster. It's like standing on top of a mountain, being a giant, and leaping over the peaks instead of going through the valleys. So the myelination is the bridge between two peaks. And with this bridge, the information flows faster. For example, ALS is a disease where people get an autoimmune reaction against their myelin. The lack of myelination causes the information from the brain to propagate slower. And this causes people to have like knee-jerk reactions or react to a movement which happened, which should have happened 20 seconds ago. This happens mostly in the early stages and in the later stages it gets even worse. It's like having really high ping on an online game. If you're playing an online game and you're in a server from Russia, for example, then you can lag around all the time, which is basically what happens if you have ALS. Now, okay, the cerebellum, therefore, is very important in handling emotions and movement. So we can see a clear connection between having emotions and our movements. You can tell a lot about how a person walks. But this study from Columbia and Harvard actually looked at it in a very rigorous way. So they compared two types of poses. Before they put these participants in these poses, they measured their testosterone and cortisol and also their feelings of power and risk-taking. One was a 
high power pose like sitting like this with your feet on top of the table your hands up in the air or the other pose which also looks very impressive so these are the two power poses and the two beta boy poses are very closed off it's like sitting like this or keeping your hands crossed you know it's it's a protective pose they also measured how people felt in these poses and what they said was that yes we feel more powerful with the powerful poses and we feel less powerful with the closed off beta poses so even subjectively they are already felt a difference now the researchers what they did was they measured the risk-taking behavior the cortisol and testosterone and feelings of power during and after and the results were kind of shocking the group of the power poses showed after controlling for baseline of course an increase in testosterone and a decrease in cortisol cortisol is your stress hormone so they felt less stressful they had more testosterone they felt more relaxed they felt more confident what they also saw was that the group with the power poses they were more likely to take a risk so they measured this by giving the participants two dollars and saying okay you can gamble with a 50 50 chance and turn this into four dollars and the people with the power pose were more likely to take that risk now the beta pose group they got an increase in cortisol so their stress hormone increased and their testosterone decreased now an increase in cortisol necessarily decreases your testosterone if you want to increase your testosterone in a natural way I'd recommend taking ashwagandha, but more on that on another video. So they had higher cortisol and they were also less likely to take the risk. Now I find this finding amazing because I've been working on my posture for almost two years in a gym by doing face pulls and hyper extensions at the top of my head in that way causing my back muscles to pull back my shoulders so I always stand up straight. And here we see research from Columbia and Harvard University validating this bro science which I've been working on for two years, which is amazing. What is also tremendous is that just two minutes of standing in this power pose can change your testosterone so noticeably that you even take more risks. So we may laugh at Jordan Peterson and say, oh, you took benzodiazepines, but his rule of standing straight with your shoulders back has validity to it and we should implement this in our daily lives if we want to feel more positive so your brain after a power pose so your brain after a power pose being less stressed and higher in testosterone and more prone to risk taking will be more easily motivated to do things that you feel afraid of for example oh you're in a bar you want to talk to a girl but you feel stressful so go to the bathroom stretch out like Usain Bolt winning the Olympics do that for like two minutes walk back out and just do it you'll feel much better after that it's a little life hack you can use all the time or grab a fitness band and do these face pulls if you do these every day your back muscles will automatically pull back your chest forward causing you a power pose throughout the day so this finding is amazing it can make a tremendous impact on your life i highly recommend people trying this out because you have nothing to lose all you need is a pull-up bar some cables if you have a gym membership you can just do face pulls if you don't know how to do face pulls just search them up on youtube they're everywhere and you know standing in a power pose while doing something scary can really really improve your risk taking so it's easy to apply there is scientific validity to it so why would you wait thank you for watching this video i'll see you in the next one and subscribe